There are a ton of different ways to do full suspension, but one of the most common these days is the dual link design. Now you're gonna find it on the back of bikes like Santa Cruz, Giant, Pivot, and many others, including this brand new Spot Rive that I have in for testing. Now Spot is doing something completely different though. They're using a carbon leaf spring for part of their lower link. All right, so how does the Rive's rear suspension work? You're riding down the trail, you hit a bump, the rear wheel goes up, the top link, it rotates clockwise down and it compresses the shock. Now the bottom link where the carbon leaf spring is, it also rotates clockwise. The leaf spring though, does not put any force into the suspension system in the first 25% of the travel or the last 25% of the travel. According to Spot, this let them create the ideal leverage ratios or the leverage ratios they wanted anyway for the beginning and ending portions of the travel. And it let them use the carbon leaf spring to tune the middle portion of the travel where you spend the majority of the time when you're riding the bike. So to understand what's going on here, we're gonna have to talk about spring rate. Now your rebound speed, that's directly related to your spring rate. The firmer the spring rate, the quicker the shock wants to rebound. So if your bike is sprung really, really stiff, you'll generally need more rebound damping to keep it in control. So why would they use a carbon leaf spring down here? Well, basically they can tune the amount of flex that the spring has and therefore the amount of force that it puts into the suspension system. Now, like any bike brand that's trying to sell you a bike, Spot makes some pretty bold claims about the Living Link system. One of them is that you don't need a lockout lever, that it's very efficient. You know, I could believe that. The other one though, it's a little more interesting. They're saying that the carbon leaf spring stores and releases energy so much so that it can even supply extra pop when you need to leave the ground. So I reached out to Spot for some clarification. They got back to me with a pretty interesting answer. Now I'm just gonna read it out. My short term memory is not so hot and this is fairly complicated. Now keep in mind that we're talking about the rebound stroke here. The shock is not compressing. We're talking about it rebounding. By relatively reducing the spring force at 75% of the stroke, and then increasing it at 25% of the stroke with the leaf spring, we effectively make the rebound relatively slower at 75%. Now that means that the rebound speed will be slower when you have a big hit. We make it relatively faster at 25%. That means that the shock will rebound faster on those small hits around the sag point. By only acting in this range, we preserve the big hit recovery near bottom out but also preserve the traction benefits of slower rebound near top out. The rebound speed is faster at 25% stroke than if the leaf spring were just a simple pivot. There you go, that's their explanation. So we're in the shop now and I've taken the living link off the spot. Uh, it's held on by four big Torx bolts, T30s on each end. Now this is obviously right here, this is the end that attaches to the front triangle. This is the end with the bearings in it. So, you know, it rotates up like this. And underneath there, you could see all those bolts. This part here is aluminum. This is your carbon leaf spring. So you could see that it's flat and it attaches again via those four bolts right there. And it's keyed to fit in over top of the chainstay bridge. So it doesn't actually flex right on the carbon though. Of course, that would be bad. So spot bolts this on top of the chainstay bridge. This goes on top of that, just like so. This is your cap that goes on top. And then the bolts thread through from underneath. So if we look at it like this, just like that, it's going to be more like this. So it's actually flexing over that point right there. Pretty neat. So this is your carbon leaf spring. And if you look closely there, you can see that They've used a bunch of different layers of carbon. You put more carbon on there, obviously it's gonna be stiffer. You put less carbon and it's gonna be more flexible. So that's when they mean when they say that this is tuned to flex the amount that they want it to. There you go. That's the living link off the spot. So Spot does two versions of the Rive, a 100 millimeter racy version. And this one, it's a 115 millimeter down country oh. version 
with a 130 mil fork up front, and it's here for a long-term review. So I haven't ridden this bike yet, but you're gonna read all about it in a few months. So stay tuned for that. <laughs>